they've gone after Mike so many times in the past, trying to get him kicked, trying to get his company kicked out of big box stores, and and there there's a persecution of Mike because his businesses, and obviously we, I mean, I'm sitting here in the my slippers right now, and and he's been a sponsor of mine for many years. He's a sponsor of this show. They always want to find a way to go after the economic lifeblood of conservative media. So Mike has been a target for that reason now for years, because when people say, oh, this person said something and they got to cancel him. Mike's like, no, that's not. Sorry, the Constitution is not something that should get you booted. Um, questioning elections is not something that should ruin somebody's life or have the, the state come down on them. Everything is starting to look a bit up. I even think, Buck, do you feel like all of the Mar-a-Lago noise is fading? Um, By which I mean there seems to be a desperate attempt with the constant leaks, the, oh, they got new subpoenas, oh, the drumbeat, oh, the circle is tightening on Trump, all these things, but that... Most Republicans are of the awareness now that this is being used to try to distract from all of Joe Biden's failures. And so we're going to play this uh, Mike Lindell clip here in a minute about his phone getting taken. But I feel as if most recognize that this is a distraction and the attempt is to put Trump on the ballot. And I don't think most Republicans are falling for it in the same way. Does that make sense? It feels like everybody's rallying around the fact that Biden's a disaster and we can talk about Trump in 23 as that plays out. Yes, also, it's a very it's a very clear cut situation now that the whole thing is about documents. Right. So we know what the story is right now. It's about uh, they claim that he had possession of classified outside of a proper facility. They're throwing some obstruction in there. But uh, the, everyone knows the obstruction thing is just. This is like throwing in a conspiracy charge where you don't have somebody on the real stuff. So you're like, well, they tried to think about doing the illegal thing that we can't prove. So there's a, there's a limit here to how much mileage I think they can get out of the story as it currently stands. There could be more leaks. There could be some connect. I'm waiting for them to unveil for a big media fusillade of this is actually about January 6th at some level. Right. Trying to break because the January 6th hearings in June. That just collapsed. I mean, that went down like a lead balloon. Nobody cared. Nobody yep. remembers. You know, Adam Schiff going, it's about our democracy. Yeah, whatever, Adam. Uh, but here with this situation, this story, Clay, we're kind of at the already bring charges or don't point of this. And I, I, I'm i not saying that they won't bring charges. I'm just saying to keep talking about it at some point. This isn't like the Russia collusion conspiracy with, oh, we have to find all the Boxes, documents, you say he's got them, you say he shouldn't have had them, you're going to charge him or not? Not only that, you talked about January 6th, they're bringing back more January 6th hearings at some point before the election. Initially, their full report, whatever for whatever value it's going to have, was going to come out in September around this time. Now they're talking about trying to have late September, early October, more hearings. And you're going to have Liz Cheney, who's been trounced and has no real claim on a seat anymore, certainly after November, already lost her primary, sitting up there trying to take the case to Trump. And I just think it's all landing very flat. And the the the, the total disconnect, the tone-deaf quality of that celebration yesterday at the White House Biden has made himself back as the central story of the midterms as well it should be because the midterms on any president are a referendum on how well he's done in office so far. And all of this, now Mike Lindell got his uh, phone stolen at a Hardee's, which is utterly ridiculous. Seized. I mean, stolen makes it sound like somebody snuck in there. You know, I'm just saying it was the FBI. Well, I mean. Frankly, yeah, it wouldn't be a surprise if he got his phone stolen because everything's getting stolen left and right all over this country because crime's out of control. But yes, the FBI seized his phone. Here he is telling that story. Today, the FBI, uh, you're going to hear this and you're probably already hearing it in the news. The FBI came after me and took my phone. They surrounded me at a Hardee's and uh, took my phone that I run all my business, everything with. Um, 
Um, they could have just, what we've done is weaponize the FBI. Um, it's disgusting. I don't have a computer. Everything I do have that phone, everything was on there. And, uh, um, and they told me not to tell anybody. Here's an order not to, don't tell anybody. Okay, I won't. <laughs> well, I am. So... There you go. <laughs> he definitely is telling people, so there's that. I think it's probably good for Mike's business, honestly, to have his phone seized. Uh, don't you feel like on some level people are way more likely who support my pillow to support him today than they were yesterday even? Well, there's always this rallying effect that it, occur- it happens with Trump and Mar-a-Lago. It's happening, I believe it will happen, with Mike. And it's not just this. They've gone after Mike so many times in the past, trying to get him kicked, trying to get his company kicked out of big box stores, and, and they're... There's a persecution of Mike because his businesses, and obviously we, I mean, I'm sitting here in the My Slippers right now, and, and he's been a sponsor of mine for many years. He's a sponsor of this show. They always want to find a way to go after the economic lifeblood of conservative media. So Mike has been a target for that reason now for years. Because when people say, oh, this person said something and they got to cancel him, Mike's like, no, that's not, sorry, the Constitution is not something that should get you booted. Um, questioning elections is not something that should ruin somebody's life or have the the state come down on them. But I I do think that there'll be people that view this, well, they they see what this is, which is, uh, at a minimum, it's intimidation. At a minimum, it's meant to tell people, you better stay in line or else we could take your phone. Because, yeah, Mike, he's a very, uh, very successful guy. He's a fighter. He'll handle this. And we've obviously got his back. But it tells a lot of other people, other businesses, other high profile donors to Republican causes, et cetera. You better watch yourself or else we may show up and just take your phone and who knows what we're going to find in there. Yeah, most people don't want their phone to be out of their own possession, period, because this has actually turned into, Buck, a monster story in terms of search and seizure, in terms of how the Fourth Amendment applies Because there isn't really a historical analogy to the phone. Because for most of American history, you couldn't carry around your entire life in your pocket, right? So uh, you can get tax returns, you can get medical information, you can get every possible bank account. Like The phone itself is basically an entryway now into every single person's entire life in a way that historically didn't exist. I mean, imagine this. If you if you had the F, if the FBI was going to spend an hour rummaging through your home or an hour going through everything, let's say they get they got the passwords, they can go through everything on your phone. Which one which one would feel more intrusive? I mean, I'd, they could look at my apartment all day. They'll find some old gluten free muffins. And, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a good point. I, I think most people would say, especially around our age or younger, that the phone is more private than even the home would be. Yes. I think I think the phone contains a lot more than you would find by searching through someone's home. I mean, you know, the the, the FBI can look through my sock drawer all day. It's not very interesting. But when they can look at every text you've sent, you know, to your wife, to family members, you know, everything else, it's intrusive. Even if you have nothing to hide, it's intrusive. Yeah. and, and, And beyond that, even pictures like almost all my pictures now are on my phone. It used to be. They're all on the wall, right? Like, I don't remember the last time that I got a picture printed off that I had taken. Not that I sit around taking that many photos, but it's kind of wild. Can we also take, take a moment to think, under what possible rationale are they taking Mike Lindell's phone? This, I think, all ties to this. The subpoenas they've sent out are around people that were part of the uh, alternate electors scheme. You've been seeing some news stories about this. Which is essentially a way of of saying, if you tried to use the system to bring about a different outcome than what happened with Joe Biden's ascension in the election, that's a crime. That's not a crime. I mean, they really are criminalizing political differences here. If you think that a judge could order a different slate, if a judge orders it, it's within the system, right? So, So there's this effort, I think, very clearly to criminalize political differences, and that's at the heart of the seizure of his and and dozens of other people's phones and records. That's a good point, because what they're also trying to do is criminalize legal arguments. Yes. There are all sorts of legal arguments that can be made and are made by lawyers on a day-to-day basis. Some of them have more validity in the law than others, 
But there's a wide expanse of what legal arguments can be made, which is what's always troubled me about this in general. Yes, it may have been an aggressive position to take about what the authority was in the states and surrounding the uh, the electors and everything else associated with it. But it wasn't it is a legal position. Yeah, I mean, right? de- Democrats are arguing as a legal matter that a baby in the ninth month of a pregnancy can be murdered and has no personhood. I think that's psychopathic, but they're arguing it right to, to make the I'm not going to lock them up for making the argument. They're allowed to make the argument legally. If the law gets passed and they violate it, well, then they deal with the consequences. But to, it's exactly what you're saying, Clay. They're they're actually criminalizing argument within the political and legal process, which which makes sense, given what they did with covid and everything else, too. They don't want to hear the alternative point of view. They want men with guns to show up and arrest you for saying it. And they want men to be able to get pregnant. And they're going after Marco Rubio. I'm sure you saw this in Florida for saying men can't get pregnant as if somehow that's going to help his political opponent. Because I feel pretty confident that men have an undefeated history of avoiding pregnancy so far throughout all of humanity. 